Thanks for joining me for this session on embedding AI and ML in your application using Oracle Machine Learning. I'm Mark Hornick, Senior Director for Oracle Machine Learning Product Management. Over the past two decades, I've focused on integrating machine learning with Oracle database, applications, and tools, as well as working with customers to apply Oracle's in-database machine learning technologies. Now, artificial intelligence and machine learning frequently make headlines today, and enterprises are spinning up projects leveraging these technologies to enhance business operations and data-driven decision-making. A key part of such solutions involves producing machine learning models, but deploying and scaling those models in production applications, as well as broader Python and R-based solutions, can be more challenging. In this session, we explore how Oracle Machine Learning simplifies embedding AI and ML in applications. So in this session, we'll focus on four key areas. Why use machine learning models? Where do models come from? How can you embed AI ML in your applications? And getting started with OML on autonomous database. There will be a few demonstrations as well. So first, why use machine learning models? To address this first question, let's explore some use cases and machine learning techniques where sophisticated algorithms allow enterprises to analyze large volume data to solve previously intractable business problems. This data might be about customers, product sales, and inventory equipment, employees, and plenty of others. We'll start with classification where we want to identify customers with high lifetime value who are likely to prepay their loans or perhaps default on their loans. Other classification use cases may include predicting if a customer is likely to churn or should be prioritized for a given marketing campaign or even HR related functions involving hiring or addressing employee retention. A second technique is regression, which could also be applied to some of these classification use cases but where an outcome is a numeric value. Now, regression can also be applied to forecasting things like product demand and sales or revenue. Of course, time series provides another class of algorithms that could be applied to these same use cases. Clustering helps with customer segmentation and document classification, which overlap with classification. But clustering can also help with grouping cell types in life sciences, or just exploratory data analysis for finding similar instances. Association rules helps to identify cross-sell and upsell opportunities, and anomaly detection is useful for transaction or claims fraud detection, or just identifying unusual cases, which may signify the need for closer inspection of your data. So you see that a given use case can be addressed in multiple ways, and these examples just scratch the surface of what's possible. Now we've seen a variety of use cases in ML techniques, so what enables us to address these use cases? Each of the ML techniques is supported by one or more algorithms that operate on data to produce machine learning models. And these models enable us to generate recommendations, predictions, as well as insights for use in applications. Let's say you're given a model, what can you do with it? Well, you can generate recommendations based on new data, for example, to indicate which products to promote to a given customer or which customers you should contact first. You may want to do this interactively via a dashboard, say for a call center rep interacting with a specific customer or as a batch operation to provide a report on the top 1000 customers to contact for a marketing campaign. You can make predictions such as what should this house value be? Is this claim likely fraud? Or how likely is this employee to leave? And then when we talk about generating recommendations and predictions, the model is one of uh, the inputs to a machine learning scoring function along with the data. In addition, the model itself can contain useful insights to address questions like, how do I define my customer segments? What are the likely root causes of equipment failures? or which features in my data are most predictive. And like predictions, these insights can also be surfaced in applications and dashboards. So we've motivated why we should use machine learning models, but where do they come from? Let's explore that next. 
In terms of tools, there are multiple options used by people in a variety of roles with different tool preferences. Maybe you like to use SQL, PLSQL, R, Python, or prefer no-code user interfaces. And there are others who might want to use automated machine learning. Well, what you might not know is that your Oracle database and autonomous database instances already contain powerful machine learning algorithms and tools. And these are directly in the core database software, just like the query optimizer, and can be accessed from SQL, R, Python, and REST APIs, as well as from no-code user interfaces. Next up are open source tools. And while there are many possible options to choose from, the two most popular are Python and R, along with their rich ecosystems of third-party packages that expand the functionality across multiple domains. And of course, there are plenty of other tools out there uh, that support AI and ML. However, when your data is principally in the database, Oracle Database and Autonomous Database offer advantages over other tools, like eliminating access latency, since there's no need to extract data from the database which also improves data security and governance. Scalability and performance, where algorithms are designed to take advantage of memory optimizations and system-provided distributed parallel processing. There's reduced complexity by eliminating the need to manage additional tools separately and the need to code and test for independent failure points. And finally, reduced cost. Machine learning in the database is included with your database license or subscription. Now earlier, we introduced multiple use cases. Oracle Machine Learning supports these through a range of machine learning techniques. For each of these techniques, OML supports several algorithms. Now you might be asking why we have multiple algorithms for a given technique. Well, some algorithms are better at ferreting out patterns in a given data set than others. Some algorithms offer a greater degree of transparency to understand the patterns or insights that were discovered. And each has its own computational demands, meaning that some are faster than others. There's a lot I could say about the features of these algorithms, but I'll refer you to our algorithm cheat sheet and documentation linked to here. And I'll move on to some code examples. How do we get an in-database model? Well, here's an example using OML for SQL to build a model to predict if customers are likely to buy travel insurance using the PL SQL procedure, create model two, and our customer's database table. This produces a model in your user schema, but you can build that same in database model using R and Python functions from R, OML for R and OML for Py. As a quick preview of deployment through SQL, we can score individual customers using the prediction probability operator in the SQL query using the model name. And we see that the customer here is likely to buy insurance. This query could easily be invoked from ODBC, JDBC, Oracle Apex, or any other interface that enables SQL access to the database. But let's continue with where models come from. You might be asking, what is a machine learning model? And we've referred to it many times so far. Well, a model represents the patterns found in data by a special purpose algorithm. And we talked about the regression technique earlier. One of the simplest regression algorithms produced is a linear regression model. From high school math, you may recall the formula for a line y equals mx plus b. The algorithm analyzes the data to determine optimal values of m, the slope, and b, the intercept. These two values, M and B, comprise the model for our simple two-variable data set, where here we're using departure delay to predict arrival delay. Models often contain metadata, like the names of the variables and model quality metrics, but minimally, these two values, M and B, could be stored in a file and handed off to some scoring code, given a departure delay, uh, that can predict arrival delay using our simple formula. With Oracle Machine Learning, these models aren't stored in flat files, but as first-class database schema objects. There's no need to worry about keeping track of this file, since just like your data, your model has database-level security and governance. But let's continue with understanding regression models. You know, by design, models aren't intended to be perfect. They need to generalize to be useful. 
as a result, the difference between the predicted value and the actual value, which is called a residual, we want to be as small as possible. And so when uh, assessing or comparing models, we can use all the residuals to compute metrics like uh, root mean square error. Of course, enterprise data uh, can have hundreds or thousands of predictor variables with millions of records. So scalable algorithm implementations are required to meet business objectives, as we have with the in-database algorithms. Now, before introducing automated machine learning as a source of models, let's explore the machine learning modeling process that you might go through as motivation for AutoML. As we said earlier, Data scientists and model builders in general typically have access to multiple algorithms to choose from for a given use case. Well, which should be tried and which is the best? So we start with one algorithm, perhaps SVM, and using our prepared data set, we'll build a model using the default settings or hyperparameters and tune these hyperparameters to hopefully improve model quality. We compare each new model against the previous ones and select the best one for this algorithm. And then we repeat this process with the next algorithm. This iterative and trial and error approach is expensive, both in terms of time and compute resources. It also requires that you understand how to tune the hyperparameters for each type of algorithm, unless you want to engage in some form of exhaustive grid search. And so this is where AutoML comes in to simplify the modeling process by eliminating repetitive and time-consuming tasks. This not only increases your productivity, but also makes machine learning more accessible to non-experts, since there's no need to understand algorithm hyperparameters. Let's look at the API functions in OML for Pi that support this. Here we start with algorithm selection, where the top N algorithms are ranked. We create an algorithm selection object, and we can choose classification or regression, and here we have a classification problem, and we'll use the accuracy score metric. Invoking select for the top four algorithms, we see that SVM Gaussian is ranked highest. Next, we perform feature selection, creating a feature selection object and invoking reduce, using the algorithm selected in the previous step. As a result, we see 13 columns being reduced to nine. And then model tuning, which optimizes the hyperparameters for the selected algorithm and features. We create a model tuning object and invoke tune, supplying the selected algorithm and the reduced feature set, which produces our final model. Now you have a machine learning model that you can use in applications and dashboards. However, not everyone wants to write code. So OML allows you to click your way to a model. Using the AutoML UI no-code user interface, you can build models with minimal input. Just specify the data and the target in what's called an experiment, and the tool does the rest. With a few clicks, you can generate editable starter notebooks. These notebooks contain Python code using OML for Pi for building the selected model, including the settings AutoML chose to produce that model. You can enhance this generated notebook to apply your own domain expertise and augment the solution. In addition, you can rename models to make them easier to recognize in your schema and applications, as well as deploy models to OML services, which we'll say more about shortly. So how do developers fit into the enterprise ML workflow solution? While I'm separating this into three roles, a data engineer, data scientist, and app developer, the same user may take on multiple roles or all of them. The data engineer enables data access, assembling and integrating data, even transforming data in support of machine learning project goals. Then the data scientist further explores and prepares the data, building and evaluating machine learning models and scripting solutions. They'll produce ML models, scripts in a variety of languages, and even REST endpoints. And these are provided to the app developer when building or augmenting applications and dashboards whether from SQL, REST, or even Python and R. Perhaps you're working with Oracle Apex, Analytics Cloud, or custom server or mobile uh, applications. So now let's explore options for embedding AI and ML in your applications. 
When it comes to modeling and production-ready deployment, there are multiple ways to produce and consume models with Oracle Machine Learning. Let's say we start within database models and we have applications that want to use them. Perhaps the simplest way is to write a SQL query to make predictions, whether for individual scores or batch scoring, where, for example, we score an entire table of customers, perhaps to prioritize customers to contact for a marketing campaign. Using REST endpoints or the OML models UI on autonomous database, you can easily deploy an in-database model to OML services. And then you can use REST endpoints to score data using that model from your application. Here's an example using the score endpoint in a curl command. You'll notice the buy insurance URI and the input record we want to score provided in JSON format. These same capabilities are available using Oracle database. However, in database models must be explicitly exported and deployed to OML services on ADB using the REST API. I've mentioned OML services a few times, so let's officially introduce that component. With OML services on autonomous database, you can manage and deploy machine learning models using a REST API for flexible application integration. Scoring using these models is optimized for streaming in real-time applications, meaning they're fast, often with millisecond response times. And unlike other solutions that require provisioning a VM for 24-7 availability, OML services is provisioned and maintained as part of Oracle Autonomous Database, so users pay only the additional compute when producing actual predictions. OML services enables key elements of the MLOps strategy, supporting model management, deployment, and most recently, monitoring. The model management and deployment services enable you to deploy in database machine learning models from both Oracle Database and Autonomous Database. It also enables deploying third-party models exported in Onyx format. These models may have been produced separately from packages such as TensorFlow and PyTorch, and even using environments providing GPU resources. OML services enables data monitoring to flag, for example, data drift to catch data quality issues proactively. And you can monitor deployed models for concept drift and changes in quality metrics. It also supports cognitive text analytics, like extracting topics and keywords, sentiment analysis, and text summary and similarity. Let's move on to explore using models produced through the AutoML UI on Autonomous Database. Here we're showing a completed experiment with several ML models ready to be used. We have random forest, decision tree, and support vector machine models. Selecting a model like our random forest model and clicking rename allows us to provide a more recognizable name. Then we can use this in database model in SQL queries as we showed earlier for both singleton and batch scoring. To deploy to OML services, simply select a model as we did before and click deploy. The model name is pre-populated. Then specify your URI, version, and namespace and click OK. This deploys the model to OML services where it is ready to be used in a REST invocation in your application. On the OML models interface, we see our model in the deployments tab along with the URI we specified. Let's switch gears to talk about deploying R and Python-based solutions through the database environment. Deploying solutions using R and Python can introduce several challenges for application developers, including separately managing R and Python engines, as well as scalability and performance concerns. OML for R and OML for Py support native R and Python interfaces to the in-database algorithms but they also support embedded execution to deploy R and Python code using database spawned and controlled engines. This code may also use third-party packages from the R and Python ecosystems. Embedded execution enables invoking user-defined R and Python functions from SQL and on autonomous database also using a REST API. And this greatly simplifies embedding R and Python results in your applications, especially when they don't use R or Python. An additional benefit is the ability to easily specify data parallel and task parallel processing. For example, you can store a native Python model in the database and use it to score large volume data across multiple Python engines 
that are spawned and managed by the database environment. Each engine scores chunks of data provided by the database, perhaps 10,000 to a million rows at a time. And the scores produced from all the engines are available in the database for access as a single database table. To visualize embedded execution, consider using additional Python packages like scikit-learn or matplotlib to uh, develop and deploy solutions with user-defined functions that are stored in the database. This also serves as a handoff to application developers from other data science members. Then using uh, SQL or REST endpoints, developers can deploy these functions using database spawned and managed Python engines where functions and data are automatically loaded. Results, which can include both structured and images, can also be stored in the database, and the Python engines automatically cleaned up. So our data science team could store R and Python models and user-defined R and Python functions in the database. Then application developers can invoke these through SQL queries and on autonomous database through REST endpoints. Similar functionality using SQL is available on Oracle database as well. Let's review an end-to-end -end example that builds a native Python model, in this case, a linear regression model, stores it in the data store using OML DS save, where we specify the model object and name of the data store entry. We define a native Python function that uses this model to make predictions. It loads the model from the data store and returns the predictions as a data frame. It also stores this function in the database script repository using OML script create. And then we invoke this function from SQL using the table function PyQ table of L. Notice we're passing in the name of our table, which is supplied as a pandas data frame to the dat argument in our function. We also specify the result format and the name of the Python function stored in the script repository. Of course, you can also invoke your function from Python using OML table apply as well. Alternatively, you can follow the same process to create your model and function, but then invoke it using REST endpoints. We first acquire an authentication token to autonomous database, and then invoke our user-defined Python function that will generate the scores. Notice we're including the URI after the table apply in the curl command. But perhaps you also want to enable application users to explicitly trigger the building of a native Python model by invoking a SQL query. Here, we build the machine learning model using Python and store that native Python model in the database. On the left, wrapped in a PL SQL block, we have a user-defined Python function that builds a linear model from scikit-learn saves this model in the database and returns the model type. We're storing this function in the database Python script repository with the name my linear regression model. The ability to store such functions through PLSQL is helpful to hand off Python or R code to production system administrators who can deploy that code without having to interact directly with a Python engine. On the right, we show invoking this Python function from SQL, again using the PyQ table eval function. Running the select statement results in a Python engine being automatically spawned, the function loaded, and the table data loaded as a pandas data frame in the first argument, dat. When it's finished, you have a native Python model stored in the database, ready to be used by another Python user or embedded execution invocation. Similar functionality is available for the R language. On autonomous database, you can also leverage custom third-party Python and R packages installed through the creation of Conda environments using OML notebooks. Admins can install third-party packages in Conda environments and upload them to object storage. These environments can then be used directly in OML notebooks from your Python and R paragraphs or in combination with embedded execution from OML for Py and OML for R. For Oracle database users, packages can be installed directly in Python and R engines residing on the database server machine. Now, one last deployment option involves models produced using third-party tools deployed to OML services. 
In previous examples, we focused on in-database model deployment. However, in other scenarios, users can produce models outside the database, for example, using OCI data science or local Python or R environments that might even leverage GPU compute resources. These models can be built using third-party packages like TensorFlow and then exported in Onyx format. Onyx is an open format built to represent machine learning models. And using the REST interface, they can be imported to OML services. As before, enterprise applications and dashboards can easily use these models to make predictions using the same REST API as for in-database models. So let's take a quick view of the OML family of components. OML provides support for the top three data science languages, SQL, R, and Python. OML Notebooks is a built-in notebook environment on autonomous database that supports SQL, PLSQL, R, Python, Conda, and Markdown interpreters. The OML AutoML UI provides a no-code automated modeling user interface with deployment capabilities to OML services, which provides a REST API for model management, deployment, and monitoring. Oracle Data Miner is a SQL developer extension, one of our first no-code user interfaces for constructing machine learning methodologies. And this table captures the platforms where each OML component is available across autonomous database and on-premises and cloud Oracle database. So how do you get started with OML on autonomous database? Well, you sign into your Oracle Autonomous Database instance as admin for database actions. Then in the main database actions interface, scroll down to administration and click database users to create an OML user. You'll uh, click create user as highlighted here on the right where you'll specify the user's name and password and turn on OML and web access as shown here. With this new user account, you sign into database actions and click Oracle Machine Learning. Then you can sign into your OML user interface. And now you're ready to use the OML tools on Autonomous Database with access to the AutoML UI, the models interface, notebooks, jobs, which supports the scheduling of notebooks to run automatically, and examples, which contains over 130 notebooks illustrating how to use the SQL, Python, R, and REST interfaces. So let's view a demonstration using AutoML to produce models to predict which wine cultivator produced a given wine based on technical characteristics of the wine itself. So picking up with the OML user interface on Autonomous Database, under Quick Actions, we'll click AutoML to see our list of experiments and create a new experiment called Wine Test. We'll select the wine dataset in our user schema. And we then select the column we want to predict. In this case, the column is conveniently named target. And the tool determines that this is a classification based on the column data type and cardinality. We can optionally specify other settings like the number of top models we'd like tuned, the database service level, and even algorithms we want to try. We see the features with our selected target. And next we can click start with either faster results or better accuracy. Faster Results chooses fewer pipeline combinations to try, while Better Accuracy explores a broader search space. We see the progress bar with the steps the UI will go through, and now we're in the algorithm selection phase. You'll notice the algorithm selected for this experiment. AutoML will return the top model for each algorithm. Now it's completing the workflow steps, showing the sorted list of models by the chosen metric. We show additional metrics that are automatically computed for each model. We can inspect individual model results, like the set of predictors used for their algorithm specific importance ranking and the confusion matrix. 
Next, we can select the model we want to deploy to OML services. By specifying the URI, in this case, wine test one, the version of this model, one, the namespace, demo, to organize our models, and whether we want to share this model with others. When we click OK, our model is quickly available for use from OML services by REST endpoints. Let's open the models page and we'll switch to the deployments tab and filter on wine. We see the model metadata and clicking on the URI, the open API specification. Let's return to the experiment. Just as easily, we can select our top model and generate an OML for Pi based notebook that includes the hyperparameters selected for the tuned model. We'll open the notebook, which contains the OML for Pi code to build the selected model. We look at the interpreter binding settings and select the service level. We'll run the first paragraph to see the experiment metadata that generated this notebook. Here we see the predictors that were selected by AutoML. We have the settings or hyperparameters used to build the model. And the notebook also includes code to make predictions using this model from Python. And that brings us back to our experiments listing. Now let's turn our attention to OML services and the REST interface. So the first thing we're going to do is get a user token to authenticate us to Autonomous Database. With this token, we can now do a number of things. Perhaps we want to score individual records. Here we have our server URL and the model URI. We use one called Affinity Prediction 2 and using the score endpoint. Notice that we have our records in JSON format that we're going to be providing as input to our REST invocation. And running this, we connect to OML services as part of Autonomous Database to produce the scores. And we see again in JSON format, our classifications for the first record uh, with the label of zero and one with their respective probabilities and our second uh, record as well. And because we're in Postman, we can view this a little more conveniently. We can also use third-party models, as we mentioned from Onyx. And in this case, we're going to show image classification using such a third-party model. You'll notice that we have one here called Onyx Image Class for classification. And let's select our file. We're going to select the image of the tiger shark. Let me just open that so you can see what it looks like. And we'll select that. We'll invoke this. And this is going to tell us what are the top three classifications. Here we see the top one is indeed Tiger Shark with the 98% chance of being correct. And we also have the uh, Great White Shark, which has a much lower probability, and the Sturgeon, which has an even lower probability. And here's the code that allows you to invoke this as part of a curl command. As a preview of the new notebook environment, let's take a look at OML Machine Learning Notebook's early adopter interface. From the OML UI, we click Notebooks. And from there, you can access the current notebook environment. If you have existing notebooks, you can copy them to the early adopter environment. Of course, you'll be able to create new notebooks there as well. You can access the early adopter interface by clicking Go to OML Notebooks EA for early adopter, or using the cloud menu, click Notebooks EA. Let's go there now. We'll open up the OML for Pi Tour notebook to highlight a few features. The first thing you'll notice is the new look and feel of the UI. You can immediately select the service level and switch between Zeppelin and Jupyter Notebook styles. You can create versions and view version history right within the notebook.
You can even compare and manage versions. Exporting a notebook provides multiple options. Whether to export everything, exclude the code, results, or timestamps, and whether to use native Data Studio format or Zeppelin or Jupyter for ease of exchange with other users in native environments. You can also print notebook contents. I find the ability to save a PDF valuable for sharing or reviewing content offline. So here we can save this as a PDF. We can add comments to individual paragraphs to help with team collaboration. We get the visual cue as well that a comment exists on this paragraph. Let's scroll down to illustrate some of the new visualizations. We first create a database table from the Iris dataset using OML for Pi, which returns a proxy object to the database table. Here we view its shape, 150 rows and five columns. Let's retrieve the data to display in the notebook using z.show on our proxy object, Iris. We have the data available in tabular format, but selecting the box plot visualization, we see the distribution of the iris dimensions grouped by species. There are a variety of customizations possible as well. Under visualizations, we can change the layout, specify interquartile range, maximum number of elements, outliers, show connected means, and for the description, we can further customize the title, subtitle, and footnote. Let's now compute attribute importance to rank variables in the IRIS dataset using an in-database algorithm. We invoke FIT on the OML AI object supplying the proxy objects for the predictors and the target. This provides the relative importance of each of the predictors. And we can visualize this in a variety of charts, such as bar charts, pie charts, and sunburst. So we're looking forward to this early adopter release. You'll ultimately have access to both the current OML notebooks and early adopter interfaces for a period of time when it releases, until we've cut over to the new notebook environment exclusively. So in summary, when it comes to embedding AI and ML in your applications, you have multiple options with Oracle Machine Learning. You can build in database models using SQL, R, Python, and AutoML interfaces, and then use those models to make predictions or gain insights in a way that's convenient for application development. You can use third-party models exported in Onyx format with OML services. You can deploy open source R and Python-based solutions that use third-party packages, again, using interfaces convenient for application development. Overall, you've seen through multiple examples how you can leverage AI and ML in your own applications through Oracle Database and Autonomous Database. I encourage you to take OML for a test drive, and to help you get started, here are a few links where you can get more information on Oracle Machine Learning. Here's our webpage and blog, our GitHub repository, which contains code examples and notebooks using the SQL, Python, and R APIs, our OML office hours, which provide updates on OML technology, how-tos, use cases, and product demonstrations. We have a library of over 70 past sessions for you to view. And to try OML on Autonomous Database, check out these Oracle Live Lab workshops. The OML Fundamentals workshop covers several of the OML components we've discussed here. Here's the main link to our online documentation as well. We have some additional resources for you to explore Oracle Autonomous Database further, as shown here. So thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed learning about Oracle Machine Learning for embedding AI and ML in your applications.